Today we are doing something that I have never done before. This video is going to be can make versus can make, but I thought it would be so interesting if I apply these two at the exact same time to half of my face. I feel like that should really help with visualizing any differences. Does one take longer to buff into your skin? Does one leave more of a white cast? I say we find out in today's video. Again, this is a video on the OG Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel UV SPF 50 PA++++ versus the new Can Make Mint, I think they call it. A very strange name. It doesn't contain mint ingredients. Instead, it contains added Sika and also it is green tinted. So I've heard some people call it the can make green. I think that is probably the best way to describe it. I have even more reasoning for that, which we will talk about in the ingredients discussion. But let's go ahead and get to testing my theory. I'm so excited to see if this works. Let's go ahead and do a finger's full length of the green on this half of my face. And the other one is the clear variety, which I will be applying to this half of my face. All right, here goes. Moment of truth. Ooh, as always, quick disclaimer, don't actually test your products this way. I am doing this only because I am in a room that does not have any windows. When I go to actually go outside, I will, of course, reapply an even layer over my skin. My idea was such a good idea in theory, but I keep taking time to do a little bit more blending on this side. <laughs> Let's take a look at what we've got so far. I see a little trace of kind of a white cast on the green side, whereas the clear, which by the way, this is one of my absolute favorite sunscreens of all time. Do you see how much more clear this is on my skin. It really lives up to its name. By the way, I bought both of these two and I also bought a bonus product. This is the Can Make Stay On Balm Rouge in shade 02, an SPF containing lip balm. You don't want to forget your lips, you know what I'm saying? You do not want to forget to put SPF on your lips. Trust me, I've had a lip sunburn. It is not fun. Normally, this is the part in the video where I would share with you my thoughts, my overall experience wearing this sunscreen. However, I think it's going to be most helpful if we look at the ingredients next. I haven't yet decided how I'm going to show this to you, so I'll just I'll move myself over for now, but it may end up being... Uh, it may go full screen, well, you'll see. First of all, can I please tell you all how incredibly difficult it was for me to obtain this ingredients list? When you buy this product, you only get, this is a Japanese skincare product, you only get the Japanese ingredients list. And if you're at all like me, you might think, oh, well, that's an easy problem to solve. All I have to do is open up my Google Translate app. That sounds so great in theory, but you actually get the Japanese translation of these plants. <laughs> And it is not easy to use the English spelling of Japanese words in order to translate into not just English, but also into the international nomenclature of cosmetic ingredients. This took me so long, I really hope it's helpful. <laughs> Magua. Magua root extract is the one I got stuck on for so long. Apparently it's mulberry, just so you know. Which in the inky is Morris Alba root extract. Anyway, let's get to talking about these ingredients, shall we? So go figure, these are two varieties of the same product. There's going to be a whole lot of similarities between these two. In terms of sunscreen filters used, it is the exact same five. The first one on the 
the ingredients list is octanoxate, which typically is a chemical filter that works out well even for sensitive skin. Some people do avoid that ingredient. I will never tell you what ingredients to use or avoid. That is your personal choice. We are just covering the ingredients. Then we have Uvenol A+, we have Zinc Oxide and Titanium Dioxide in slightly different order, and Tenosorb S in both products. Now, every ingredient that you see highlighted in yellow is an ingredient that is unique to one product. Something you will absolutely notice is that there is nothing in the clear version that isn't in the mint version. Instead, the mint version has 10 more ingredients, including, unfortunately, per some people's, again, opinion, fragrance in two different forms of dyes. The reason I draw attention to those is because it is indeed possible to experience irritation or allergy from those ingredients. And again, remember how earlier in this video I said, uh, the Seiko, we're not gonna call it that. You may notice that that is the second to last ingredient in the ingredients list which you all know means that it's not exactly very high in that ingredient, so it sort of seems like it was just a little bit of an afterthought. Again, I love CanMake, I love the brand, I love the prices, but I gotta critique that just a little. I am glad there's no actual mint in the product though. I am not personally a fan of mint at all in skincare, in foods. You know what I think the worst thing is? Chocolate mint. Chocolate mint feels like a betrayal. I love chocolate so much, but mint is so disgusting. So eating chocolate mint is like enjoying the chocolate with a, a side of agony. Anyone feel me there? Anyone? Anyway. The reason why I wanted to start with the ingredients is because this is going to be important in order for me to tell you about my personal experience with, in particular, this Can Make Green version. Okay, so my experience. Now you have to understand that before I do these videos, I always try to have used these sunscreens for a full two weeks so that I can give you a really in-depth review of a product. I'm just gonna be honest with you that I did not do that with this product because, and maybe you can already tell from my skin, but I started to notice some problems happening consistently with using it. Again, I stress, not the OG. This one is my fourth tube of this, specifically the green version. This is always tricky to talk about because I have acne prone skin and acne is so complex that it is impossible for me to say, oh yeah, it was this product. It was this product breaking me out. I can't say that. Instead, I can say I saw a correlation. The thing is, and all of those of you that are watching that also deal with acne, you know that when you start seeing a correlation between a product and having an increase in breakouts, you don't really want to keep using that product, do you? And that's what happened to me. I saw breakouts happening and I said, let's not risk it. And it looks like they are indeed getting better. Again, I can't say conclusively it's this. I can't say, you know, oh, it's cause they added fragrance. I can't say those things, but I can tell you, this is one of the reasons why people, some people avoid ingredients like fragrance is because they are pretty unpredictable. I'm not anti-fragrance. I have a lot of products that contain fragrance that I really enjoy, but sometimes I do notice that other products have fragrance and I just can't really use them without seeing an increase in acne in my skin. But that's not the only reason why I quit using it. Oh no, it is definitely not. You probably can kind of see it already, right? Do you, do you see the difference in my skin? It's sort of like just not as good of a can make sunscreen as the original. I will even make a confession and I really thought hard about whether I wanted to include this in this video. <laughs> I really did. I'm about to embarrass myself. I did wear this outside all day. It did indeed protect me from the sun. However, I have some photos from the day we were at uh, like a, a pier. I have photos where it's just not, <laughs> it's, it's not looking cute. <laughs> It's the reapplication of this where it was in particular betraying me. It was just so much more white. And also that's where I was getting kind of these patches on my skin where there's just extra sunscreen all in one place. And it just, it does not photograph well. It probably looked really not cute in person. Uh, to think about the number of people that were there. You know, what can you do? What can you do? You're gonna have 
uh, sunscreen disasters at some point in your life if you do what I do and continue to test sunscreen. You know, it's just part of the game. At the end of the day, that's two strikes against the green version, whereas I absolutely love the clear version. So it's it's really no contest at this point. Now, as usual, I did uh, remake my graphs for you for both of these products. In this rating system, they're practically identical. We have the exact same SPF and UVA rating. Neither of these address water resistance. They both wear really well. They both have more of a dewy finish. The packaging is the same. These are 40 grams. Somehow I thought these were only an ounce, so the price per ounce is actually pretty darn good, coming in at around, around $8 an ounce. I did notice that the price on Stylevana and YesStyle is pretty much identical for these right now, so I'll just link both below in the description box if you're interested. So really the only difference is that it seems to take a little tiny bit more buffing with the can make green version. That's it. However, this doesn't fully address everything else, including the ingredients change, the appearance on my skin, the slight white cast. And of course, for those of you who wear makeup, a quick little does it work with makeup? Yeah, absolutely. Both of these work with makeup. In fact, CanMake is a drugstore Japanese makeup company. They actually call this a sunscreen makeup base. But as for my final thoughts, do you need to buy the CanMake green? Probably not. Probably not. For me personally, this just boils down to you can't beat perfection. And to me, the can make specifically in clear is perfection. It has been interesting though, because I've seen quite a few people say, oh my gosh, I hated the can make sunscreen and come to find out they were using the white version, which I still haven't tried, but I feel like this might've been a little example of possibly what the white version is like especially that picture I showed you earlier. Let's forget that happened, okay? We're gonna forget it, we're gonna forget it. And you know what, really quickly before I close this video, I wanna add the reason why I love the clear version of this so much, not only because it is very low in the potential for irritation as it doesn't have fragrance and dyes, but also because it does have some of those mineral filters, I think what happens on my skin is I get just enough of an astringent effect that it doesn't look dewy through the day. It does right now, but it kind of seems to just get to a point where it's a little more of a skin-like finish for me. It's really beautiful, one of my absolute favorite sunscreens, if not my absolute favorite. As for our next sunscreen trial, given that I had some acne issues recently, I thought this is just the perfect time to try out this Hero for Shield. They say this is a sunscreen even for those of us with acne, and it too has a green tint. So it'll be really interesting to see how this compares, ironically, to the can make green. But that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy today's video. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.